Hey, with things going as they are, I'm curious about what you'll be getting from the inheritance. Hi, Lena. I'm not sure I follow. I just got back from the store. Are you wondering what I'm cooking for lunch? No, not that. I'm talking about your inheritance. How's the will looking? Since we're family, I think I should know too. So, can you spill the beans on how much you're getting? I don't really see the need for that though. You're just my sister-in-law. Don't be like that. I just told you why. We're family, so I should be in the loop. Do you see me as family or not? If you consider me family, you should let me know. Well, yes, you are family. But this inheritance is from my side of the family. I don't have to share it with you. Plus, it's private stuff, and I don't want any drama. When my mom passed away, there were fights over what she left behind. So, my dad told me not to talk about it when he's gone. Oh, there were fights before? Yeah. It got pretty messy even though we're family. Everyone was fighting and hurting each other. They kept pushing for more and a bigger share. It was tough on my dad and me. We were still sad about my mom. But your brother, he was there for me, supporting me through it all. He tried to protect me and was my rock. That's when I realized I wanted to marry him. Wow, that's sweet. Since you married my brother, that means we're family. So, spill the beans. Didn't we just talk about this? Your dad talked to you about the inheritance, right? He did it because of your family? But you won't tell me. That makes me feel like you don't see me as family. If I'm wrong, then how about giving me the details? How much are we talking? Um... Let's start with the property. I heard your dad owned a bunch of land around your place. Is that true? Yep, that's right. And what else is there? Well, there's some money he saved up. Just what I thought. Can I borrow some cash from you then? Borrowing again? I just lent you $200 last week. Yeah, but I'm taking care of my parents. It's tough, you know. Your in-laws also need help. As part of the family, you should pitch in, right? You've got the means. You got land and money. Sharing a bit won't hurt, right? Not fair to keep it all. Bill even said I could rely on you if I have problems. You wanted to pay him back, right? He helped you. Time to return the favor. Got it. I see your point. How much do you need? Just $500. Not a lot. All right, fine. I'll send it over tomorrow. Awesome! Thanks a bunch! But this has to be the last time. I don't want this becoming a habit. I still have to cover my dad's hospital bills. Sure thing. I'll only ask when I really need it. You're cool with that, right? Ugh, yeah, I get it. We all need help sometimes. But seriously, I don't want this to become some regular thing, you know? I've got my own stuff to deal with, like my dad's never-ending hospital bills. They just keep piling up, and it's a freaking nightmare to handle on my own. Oh, absolutely, Sarah. I totally understand. I would never want to take advantage of your kindness or anything. I swear, I'll only bug you for money when it's like, super duper necessary. No unnecessary splurges or anything like that. I'll be all responsible and stuff with the money, I promise. Fine, Lena, I get it. These family emergencies are like a never-ending nightmare. Draining my finances and my sanity. You don't have to keep reminding me, okay? Oh, I'm sorry if I'm annoying you, Sarah. I just thought you might need a gentle reminder. But hey, let's not beat around the bush here. We're family, right? And family helps each other out, no matter what. So, a little bit of money from you shouldn't be a big deal, right? Look, Lena, I understand that we're family, but that doesn't mean I'm obligated to give you money whenever you want it. I have my own expenses to deal with, like those crazy hospital bills I mentioned earlier. It's not like I have a never-ending supply of cash. Oh, come on, Sarah. Don't be so stingy. I mean, we're practically sisters-in-law. And you know how it goes with family. We're supposed to support each other financially. It's like a rule or something, right? Lena, that's not how it works. Just because we're related by marriage doesn't mean you can constantly rely on me for money. I have my own responsibilities and financial burdens to bear. It's not fair for you to just assume that I'll always have money to spare. Well, excuse me for thinking that you might actually care about helping out your family. I guess I was wrong to expect any kind of support from you. I mean, isn't that what family is for? But I guess you have your own priorities, huh? It's not about not caring, Lena. It's about being realistic and responsible. I have my own financial obligations, and I can't just keep handing out money whenever you ask for it. I have to think about my own well-being and the well-being of my immediate family. Fine, Sarah, whatever. 
I'll figure something out on my own, like I always do. I don't need your help anyway. I guess family isn't as important to you as I thought it was. Lena, that's not what I meant. Family is important to me, but I can't be your sole source of financial support. I'm sorry if you feel let down, but I have to prioritize my own financial stability. I hope you understand. Yeah, sure, I understand. I guess I'll just have to handle everything on my own, like I always do. It's not like I can count on family when I need them the most. Thanks for nothing, Sarah. Sarah, I'm really sorry to hear about your dad. When I got the news, I was honestly taken aback. Bill, it's been such a long time since we last talked. Yeah, my father's currently in the hospital dealing with health issues. Actually, I managed to visit him not too long ago. He seemed quite concerned about your well-being. Seriously? That's just like him. Always putting others before himself. Definitely. He's known for being kind to everyone, and that's why it hit me hard to hear he's not well. By the way, I do want to apologize for missing your wedding last year. Oh, don't worry about it. I totally understand that work can get really demanding. About that though, I need to come clean. I didn't tell the truth about my absence. Wait, are you saying you lied to me? Yes, the real reason was I couldn't face the idea of you getting married. It was tough for me to handle. I did get transferred, but it was my own request. I needed a change of scenery. Hold on, are you implying what I think you are? Sorry for bringing this up now. Right now, we should be focusing on your dad. I was genuinely shocked when I saw his condition. Since mom passed away two years ago, he hasn't been himself. His health has been on a downward spiral. While he already had some underlying health problems, the sadness seemed to make everything worse. Taking care of him at home became too difficult. That's why he's in the hospital. Your dad also mentioned that he's worried about your marriage. Are you content with how things are in your life right now? That's quite unexpected. But yeah, I can say that I'm happy with the way things are for us. I'm glad to hear that. In that case, I suppose it's alright. On another note, I'll be in town for work for a while. I'm gonna make an effort to visit your dad regularly. Thanks a lot. If you get time, I'm planning to do the same. Let's chat again, okay? I heard your dad passed away. He must have had a tough time till the end. Yeah, he's with my mom now. They're probably having a good time together. That's a nice idea. All right, let's cut to the chase. Time to talk about what's left behind. The inheritance, you know? Huh? Oh no, did you forget? You promised to spill about your dad's stuff and what you're getting. Let's start with the money. So, what's your share? There's actually no money. Seriously? No money left? The only thing left is the property? It's a bit awkward for you, right? Well, better than absolute zero, I guess. We'll work with what's there. We? Who else is in on this? Obviously, my parents and I. Who else? Anyway, we're thinking of putting up a new house on that property. We've already hired someone to do it, so we're committed. Do whatever you want. Well, that was smoother than I thought. Thanks for the land. Thrilled that we'll be living there. The funerals and memorials are all wrapped up. It must have been an incredibly trying time for you. How are you coping with everything? I really appreciate your help during the funeral. I believe my dad would have been grateful for all your efforts. You know, I don't think he'd be too pleased with the current situation. What are you implying? Well, you're tearing down your dad's house to put up a new one? Yeah. I mean, there are so many memories in that house. But my sister-in-law and husband have plans to build a new house on the land. First, they knock down your family home, and then they claim your house? They're not taking it away from me. We're all going to live there. So, we're putting it under my husband's name. It just seems simpler that way. Did they push you into this decision? Wait, what? I hate to break it to you, but your husband isn't who you think he is. He's involved with someone else. That's not even remotely funny, Bill. Don't even joke about it. I wish I could say it was a joke, but it's true. Your dad asked me to look into things. I even have evidence that he's been cheating on you. That's impossible. I suspect that they're planning to kick you out once everything is settled. He might even file for divorce and marry the other woman. Hold on a second. That can't be true. 
Andy would never betray me like that. He stood by me after my mom's passing, protecting me from my relatives. My mom came from a wealthy family, and her relatives were relentless in their pursuit of her inheritance. Eventually, we gave it all away to avoid the pressure. But Andy was there throughout everything. It was all part of his long-term strategy. He aimed to gain your trust. Are you saying he planned all of this from the beginning? Your dad overheard a conversation between him and his sister. This was before he fell ill. He spotted them together at a cafe. I can't wrap my head around this. Your dad didn't want to distress you back then. He shared everything with me during my visits. In our final meeting, he entrusted me with looking after you. You're just trying to deceive me. I truly wish I were lying, but it's the truth. So, he was manipulating me all along? Once Andy saw the extent of your mom's inheritance, he assumed your dad had a similar fortune. That's when he started scheming. I'm starting to believe this, but if it's true, I'm going to end up divorced and homeless. I'll be left with nothing. I can't handle all of this right now. It's too overwhelming. Please don't worry, I promised your dad, but even without that, I will do whatever I can to protect you. Thank you. But why are you doing all of this for me? I've had feelings for you since we were kids, and that hasn't changed. Even today? Despite the fact that I am married? I can't control my feelings. I was afraid to confess my emotions. I was content being your friend, having you close to me. But then Andy came into the picture and swept you off your feet before I could even express myself. I was angry at myself for not being there when you needed me. I felt like I let you down, so I started distancing myself. When I learned about his deceitful plans, I became furious and vowed to shield you from harm. This is a lot to digest right now. I know it is. However, there's no need to worry. Everything will be alright. It's too late already. The paperwork is complete and the property is in his name. Legally, there's nothing we can do. I wasn't thinking about reclaiming the property. Wait, then what's the plan? Your dad and I devised a plan of our own. The pieces are already in motion. We just need to initiate them. I won't allow anything negative to happen to you. I promise. Hey, Sarah. It seems like you've been sticking around for too long. It's time for you to move on. Wait, what are you talking about? The new house will be ready soon, and Andy wants to clear out the old baggage before our family moves in. Get it? And just so you know, Andy doesn't love you anymore. His heart belongs to someone he dated in the past. They reconnected, and you're in their way. Don't obstruct their happiness in our new house. So you're saying he cheated on me? Cheated? No, you've got it wrong. It's the other way around. He always had feelings for her. You're the one on the side. Know your place. And don't even think about alimony. You're not getting a cent. Actually, when a married man cheats on his wife, she's entitled to alimony. Spare me the nonsense. He liked her first. You're the other woman. Get that through your head. He doesn't care about you. He married you for your money. Here's a little secret. This was all my idea. I'm the one who came up with the plan. You thought of all this? Yep, I'm the mastermind behind it. You won't be in the picture much longer, so I might as well spill the beans. I've known you for quite some time. To be exact, I'm friends with one of your relatives on your mom's side. I thought you were rolling in cash, but turns out you have less than I thought. That's why I thought it'd be best to take small amounts of money over time. So that's why you kept asking for $500? Exactly. I wanted to get as much as I could without raising suspicion. $500 wasn't a sum you'd say no to right away. You sly fox! This is all you're doing! You did this to me to get close to me. You're a terrible person! Don't you feel any remorse for what you've done to me? Not even a bit. You're the one who fell into my trap. You should have been more careful and skeptical. The world can be harsh. To get ahead, you need to be smart. True, I guess. Thankfully, my dad and friend were there to help me. But I do need to thank you for taking that land off my hands. Owning that land comes with a property tax of $70,000. I could never afford that. $70,000? Yes. Everything has been transferred to Andy's name, so it's his responsibility. There's also something called an inheritance tax. And since I didn't sell the property to Andy, he has to pay that as well. But I'm sure you're already aware of all this, being so clever. Well, I wasn't. 
I assumed he'd get it for free. $70,000 is a lot. The new house alone costs over $50,000. There's no way he can cover that. My family can't help him anymore either. We all chipped in for that house. With the property tax, we won't be able to make our mortgage payments. It's overwhelming. We can't handle it. Actually, $70,000 for a piece of land is relatively cheap when you think about it. I didn't even want to inherit it, so I'm relieved you guys took it off my hands. Wait, what? You didn't want to inherit it? Sure. The neighbor next door lost his parents a long time ago. He's not around much since he lives and works in another state. The property has been neglected because of this. The son, who is also a friend from my childhood, recently came back and chatted with my dad during his hospital stay. They talked about the property, and my friend decided to change it into a dairy ranch. A dairy ranch? What the heck? They've applied for a permit, which was approved a few days ago. They're starting to set everything up this month, and plan to move around 300 cows next month. That's what I've heard so far. Our property is small compared to the neighbors, and even when your new house is done, I doubt it'll be a pleasant living situation. It'll likely be noisy and smelly. Will you guys be okay with that? Of course not! Who would be okay living next to a bunch of cows? Why in the world would they want to start a dairy farm there? Well, my friend knows about farming, and his parents aren't around anymore. He's got some cows that need a new place. When he went to check the property, another neighbor saw him and they started talking. The other neighbor is also good with cows. He offered to take care of them and share the profits. All the paperwork is set, and someone will look after the cows. Things are going smoothly. Not fair! Nobody talked to us! They didn't need to. About Andy's girlfriend, I already knew that. I actually have proof of their cheating, like pictures and videos. A friend connected me with a lawyer and they filed the case today. We figured out how much alimony is fair and also splitting the stuff we have. What? A lawyer and proof? When did you get all that? The lawyer thinks we have a strong case. We can even show you planned all this from our chat. Thanks for sharing, Lena. You can't use our chat as proof? You can't show anyone without my permission. No need for permission. Texts and chats can be proof in court. Can't be. We worked so hard. Waited three years for our plan. Ruined in weeks? Show scheming gets caught. Now you're in debt and near a dairy farm. Glad I'm not with that. Sarah, I'm so sorry. I never should have tricked you like that. It was a terrible mistake on my part, and I deeply regret it. I want to make things right and repay all the money I owe you. Please, give me a chance to rectify my actions and help Andy out of this dire situation. Asking for help after how you treated me is bold. You deceived me and caused me a great deal of pain. Why should I even consider helping you and Andy? We're practically strangers now. I understand that it may be difficult for you to trust me again, Sarah, but I genuinely want to make amends and repay my debts. Andy is in serious trouble. And if we don't find a way to resolve this financial crisis, it could have devastating consequences for him and his family. I'm begging you, please find it in your heart to offer a helping hand. We may be strangers, but we're all humans facing the consequences of our actions. Spare me your pathetic stories. You think that I'll be tricked into your stupid trap once again? Well, I tell you what, in your dreams, I've had enough of your selfish attitude. It's always driving me crazy. Don't think that you can just get away with every wicked thing you did to me. I'll never allow that. After Andy's devastating divorce, his life and his family's life were completely consumed by an overwhelming amount of debt. Frustration and hopelessness filled his heart as he desperately attempted to sell their house only to be met with disappointment at every turn. It seemed like nobody was interested in purchasing a property situated near a bustling farm, leaving Andy and his loved ones in a state of financial turmoil. Their circumstances forced them to relocate to a dilapidated house on the outskirts of town, a place far removed from the comfort and security they once knew. To add insult to injury, Andy's girlfriend decided to abandon him in his darkest hour citing his mounting debt as the sole reason for her departure. It was a painful blow for Andy, as he not only lost the love of his life, but also faced the harsh reality of being left with nothing but a colossal burden of financial obligations. Day by day, they found themselves navigating through a treacherous maze of difficulties and seemingly insurmountable dead ends. 
their dreams and aspirations overshadowed by the weight of their predicament. Meanwhile, amidst the chaos and turmoil that had engulfed Andy's life, I found solace and happiness in the budding relationship that was blossoming between me and my partner, Bill. We were taking the time to truly get to know each other, enjoying the delightful journey of discovering our shared interests and passions. With each passing day, our connection deepened, and we found ourselves progressing towards a love that was both comforting and exhilarating. Our bond flourished so beautifully that we made the decision to take the next step and move in together. Bill's unwavering support and affection enveloped me like a warm embrace, making me feel cherished and valued in ways I had never experienced before. Eventually, our love story reached its pinnacle as we exchanged vows, promising to spend the rest of our lives together in matrimony. The sheer contentment and joy I felt in that moment were beyond measure, a testament to the power of love and resilience in the face of adversity. Nowadays, Bill and I find ourselves basking in the glow of our harmonious union, reveling in the happiness that permeates our daily lives. The challenges we once faced have become distant memories, overshadowed by the warmth and laughter that fills our shared existence. As for those cunning individuals who sought to take advantage of Andy's misfortune, they are now being forced to confront the consequences of their deceitful actions. Life has a way of balancing the scales, and it's comforting to know that justice prevails in its own time.